Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Anna Baker's wedding dress. In 1836, a man named Elias Baker purchased a mansion in Altoona, Pennsylvania and moved his small family in. Elias's oldest daughter was named Anna, and when she fell in love with a steel worker, things took a dark turn. Anna's father didn't want her dating this man, but she kept doing it in secret. The story goes that Anna and the man planned a secret wedding and were going to elope. Unfortunately, Elias found out and freaked out. He apparently purchased the steel mill that the man worked for and then forced him to have to move to an entirely different city so as to prevent him from being able to continue seeing Anna. Anna of course was furious with her father and I'm sure this was only made worse by his decision to offer other men to her, to which she of course declined because that's just weird. Anna instead locked herself in a room with her wedding dress that she never got to wear. Anna unfortunately never married after that and spent the rest of her life being terribly upset about the whole incident. After her death, it is said that her anger and despair ended up going into the wedding dress. Members of the Baker family reported seeing the dress in different places around the house, despite no one moving it themselves. Some have even reported seeing Anna's spirit dressed in the gown around the house as well. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Golden Eagle. This car was a 1964 Dodge 330 Limited Edition, and it has been blamed for the death of around 14 people, which, like, how do we even let it get that out of control? It is said that the car started out as a police car originally, but there were three officers assigned to this car who all ended up taking their lives and other people's lives in horrible ways. Not in the car, but still super weird that this all seemed to happen after they had been using the cars for work. Because of this strange correlation, it ended up being sold off to another man. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it is said that because of the rumored cursed car, it became a point of interest for vandals. People began vandalizing the car only to meet their own untimely family fates, which were all met in strange ways. For example, it was said that one vandal died from being struck by lightning. It is said that the curse is so strong that one person decided to merely touch the car and it sent him into madness as he went on to commit atrocious crimes after that that I cannot even detail here on YouTube. The car now belongs to Wendy Allen who supposedly collects and decorates haunted cars for a living, so it seems as though it's finally found its home, far, far, far away from anyone else. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years, the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle, which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone, and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of the gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation, which would be incredibly useful, but there are those who always try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issues start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from its home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the stone is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. So I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and to just follow the rules. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery, but for those who did the discovering, well, things haven't been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery, and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead, things have been going terribly for them. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for the discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece of art, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana, and it is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world, which seems like that would make a lot of sense. One of the reasons for this spooky reputation is because of a mirror that resides inside of it. It is said that this mirror holds the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and two of her children. Legend goes that a woman named Chloe was a slave 
slave at the plantation, and she drew up a sort of plan to get revenge on the owners of it, Sarah and her husband. Chloe baked a cake full of poison for them, but in the end, the rest of the family, except for the husband, ended up consuming the poisonous cake. When they passed away, it is said that their spirits went into the only mirror that was uncovered at the time, thus this haunted mirror was born. People who have since visited the plantation have claimed to see the family in the reflection, as well as handprints on the glass, despite the continuous polishing. In our number 5 spot today we have tap shoes. These tap shoes were listed on eBay and they are cute as can be. They're black shiny ones with a red bow to tie them together. They look recital ready, but apparently they haven't been used in a long time and the reason behind it all is chilling. Legend goes that these shoes once belonged to a little girl who loved to dance. At some point the shoes were retired and she would go on to meet an untimely fate. The shoes ended up being placed with other old the shoes ended up being placed with other old memento items and put in a closet and sort of forgotten about. The shoes, as well as the other items with it, ended up being part of an estate sale years later, but the spirit of the person who passed may have already had some other ideas about what they wanted to happen to the shoes. The seller of the shoes reported that there were mysterious happenings surrounding the shoes as they were clearing out their late aunt's house, the person who was the owner of the shoes. They explained that there were mysterious knocking sounds coming from inside of the closet, almost as if the shoes were tapping by themselves. Also, as it turns out, the house had quite a gruesome history that included killings, so if not the ant's ghost, perhaps there's another one lurking somewhere in there. In our number 4 spot today we have the dark mirror. This mirror now resides with the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult, but prior to that, this mirror was received from the owner who had purchased it from a psychic fair. It is believed that this mirror was created sometime around the 1820s or 30s and it is actually quite beautiful to look at, despite the sinister things it seems to hold. The owner who gave it to the museum explained that every time they peered into the mirror, they saw these extremely upsetting things while looking into the dark mirror's reflection. The museum has said that since they added the mirror to their collection, there have been guests who have also reported the same kind of things. Guests have claimed to see things reflected back at them like sightings of their own corpse. In our number 3 spot today we have the water jug. Ok, estate sales are weird places. There are weird things there, some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I truly could not make that item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house and that she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy until after she passed away and he was taking care of the estate and he bumped into it. How was this jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought that perhaps it was just old leftover water and he just ignored it, but the same thing seemed to happen repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same. It would increase, seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be best to pass on to someone who was ready to take on this mysterious, strange object. In our number 2 spot today we have Letta the doll. Before we really dive into this one, can we just acknowledge how all cursed dolls look like they would be a cursed doll. I mean like Annabelle, Robert, they both totally look like dolls that would be holding a secret scary curse. And this doll, Letta, is just another one that we can add to that list. Letta is a doll that is said to be around 200 years old and is extremely cursed. This doll is called Letta for short as its full name is Letta Me Out. Really clever. The doll was originally found underneath a house which definitely feels like the origin story of a haunted doll. The creepy discovery came 47 years ago. Letta still lives with the man who found him. The hauntings of Letta include things like the doll walking around on its own at night, the owners finding objects around the house that have been moved into odd places, some people have even seen Letta move right in front of their own eyes, and the owner also reports finding little doll sized scuff marks around the home as well. It is said that this doll once belonged to someone who passed away while holding it, thus their spirit became trapped inside of the doll. Apparently one day in an interview about Letta, as the interviewer was asking questions about the person who passed, the doll began to move in her lap. Yeah, no thank you. 
Letta has his own Instagram and Facebook page in case you want to hear more about all of the creepiness surrounding this cursed doll. In our number one spot today, we have the mask. This metal mask resembles the face of a monkey. It's definitely already a little strange looking, but the story is even more interesting. According to the seller of this item, they explained that they acquired this mask in Thailand, but not before they experienced a supernatural battle where a witch used spells to bind the spirit of a jinn to the mask, trapping it in. Since then, the mask is said to be full of supernatural powers, some of which could bring benefits, but it takes a whole pile of work. This mask is said to have the ability to fend off vampires as well as potentially bring riches to its owner, but it needs some things in return. The entity in the mask needs regular offerings of food and drink, and it also requires the owner to meditate in front of it for 20 minutes, three times a day. Talk about high maintenance. If a person refuses to do these things while in possession of the mask, it is said that a cruel fate awaits them. I mean, what do you expect when you anger an ancient spirit? Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the statue. This statue or bust is said to have been made by a man named William who enjoyed making these sorts of things out of clay. Unfortunately, however, legend goes that this specific statue was made on the same day that William was crushed to death during a tragic work accident. A co-worker of his who showed up to work the following day found that this statue was still there, so he took it home with him. For a while, he kept the statue hidden, but when he took it out to display it, things started to go awry. It started with just a heavy and uninviting feeling, but soon things escalated. He began to hear doors slamming on their own, only to go and find them wide open. If anything was placed next to the statue, the next time he would find it completely shattered, and at one point he found the statue in a position that he never placed it in. He finally had the last straw when he saw a dark, shadowy figure, or a sort of mist, moving around near where he placed the statue. After this, he was so spooked he had a friend list the item for him on eBay because he just simply needed to get rid of it. In our number 9 spot today, we have Aluru Rock. Aluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to the land. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked to not not take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Other than the bad karma and just in general feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and sometimes even the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often, at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 8 spot today, we have the beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tolman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year, they bought a second-hand set of bunk beds for their kids for 100 bucks. but as it would turn out, they bought much more than than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that, despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on by themselves, they would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in the landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number 7 spot today, we have the Crying Children paintings. These paintings were a series created by an Italian painter who was known as Giovanni Breglin, but his name was really Bruno Amarillo. Bruno was born in Venice in 1911 and fought in World War II, which ended up being the inspiration for a lot of his paintings. During his time in the war, he saw a lot of suffering, and this is where he got the idea for the series of Crying Children paintings. After the paintings were sold, there began to be reports of fires in all of the places where the paintings were held. While this could have just been a strange coincidence, the weirdest part is that the paintings always remained intact while everything else around them was burned. This quickly became the most talked about thing and was on the front of every newspaper, and the paintings quickly gained the nickname Diablo. It caused the paintings to end up being replicated and mass produced, but none of the replicas hold quite the same powers as the originals. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Goddess Statue. The Goddess of Death statue was 
is also known as the woman from the Lem. This artifact was made out of limestone and it was created somewhere around 3500 BC and was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years it has belonged to many different families who all have been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner and after four years death began to come to him and his family as well. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed but once the third family finally got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum because it is of course an ancient relic but legend goes that the museum curator who initially took care of it died within a year of receiving it. So maybe the curse lives on. In our number 5 spot today we have the goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum but it was a museum of specifically haunted things so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? All the above? Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay because why not? And the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay. What kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be perfectly honest. In our number four spot today, we have the Surrey Ghost Car. On December 11th, 2002, a call came into the Surrey Police Department. The caller reported that they had just seen a car lose control and run off the road and then presumably crash. It was, of course, an emergency call, but not necessarily anything out of the ordinary. That was until authorities got to the location and realized that they couldn't find any evidence of a crash. They kept searching and ended up finding a maroon colored car that was nose down in a ditch nearby. But this car was covered in so much undergrowth that it must have been here for months. This meant that somehow this crash went undetected for five months, and worst of all, so did the body that lay nearby. Using dental records, they were able to identify the body as a man who had been wanted for robbery since July of that year. It is said that the sighting of the car leaving the road was a ghostly replay of the events that had taken place five months prior. In our number three spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay list the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique. Just this one time. In our number two spot today, we have the Nightmare Doll. Haunted dolls like Annabelle and even Robert get a lot of hype, but they certainly aren't the only dolls with stories of curses and hauntings behind them. This Nightmare Doll was listed for sale on eBay, and according to the seller, the doll is possessed by a Dibuk, which is a malicious demon or entity. The seller of the doll is actually someone who apparently specializes in selling these sort of paranormal items that no one wants anymore. The seller explained that the owner of the doll bought it at an antique shop and while they did tell her about what the doll held, she didn't know what the word meant so she took it anyways. Soon after purchasing it, she realized that anyone who came into contact with the doll was then plagued with terrifying nightmares and occurrences of these sort of shadow people. She only could handle this all for a couple of months before she handed the doll over for it to be sold and moved far, far away from her. In our number one spot today, we have the carving. This is a carving that was sold on eBay in 2013, which the sellers claimed had been in their family for over 60 years. It was originally found by the seller's grandparents in the attic of their home. This was back in the 1950s, and when it was found, the grandparents asked the original owners of the home where it had come from. They explained that it was a gift from a prisoner who was said to have carved it. The seller explained in their post that, quote, anyone who comes in contact with it seems to feel strange or creeped out by it. The statue mostly didn't cause too much harm, that was, until the seller tried to put it on display in their home. Once it was taken out of an old box and placed in a cabinet, strange occurrences began. They said that, quote, I began to experience the television turning off and on, lights coming on in rooms no one was in, the kids' toys coming on in the middle of the night in their room at 3 a.m. At the end of the day, despite the troubles this person had with the statue, they still ended up selling it for $85. 
five bucks, not a bad deal. Go rid of a demon and gain some cash for it. At number 10, the dead book box. Now, do you remember that the 2012 movie The Possession was based on a true story? Well, that story was based on a debuck box. Now that specific box that the movie was based on is one that now Zach Bagans has at his haunted museum. And this box is actually a wine cabinet that is allegedly haunted by a debuck. And now a debuck is Yiddish for a malicious possessing spirit that people believe to be a dislocated soul of a dead person. And so it becomes trapped in an object, like this wine box, until a person helps release the spirit. Now in Baggins box, it's believed the restless spirit can possess the living, and that's why Zach Baggins is keeping the cabinet closed, because he's a little bit scared of it himself, I would think. Now, the box was originally posted on eBay for sale by a man named Kevin Manis, who was having a ton of trouble with it. Anytime he gave it as a gift to someone, they experienced strange issues and its darkness, and it passed through the hands of others afterwards as they would each have their own unnerving experiences with the box. At Zach Baggins Museum, if you want to see the box, you must insist to see it and be 18 years of age or older and sign a liability waiver because they're not joking around. <laughs> now, not all exhibits at the museum stay open all the time. At number nine, we have the devil's rocking chair. Baggins acquired a rocking chair that was owned by the family whose stories are probably what inspired The Conjuring 3. Now, this was the devil made me do it case in the early 80s. During stories talking about David Glatzel's possession, Ed and Lorraine Warren said the rocking chair would rock on its own, levitate, and even vanish and reappear. Now, David and Lorraine also claimed to have seen the devil sitting in it. So, take that as you will. Now, with all this spooky stuff in mind, Zach Baggins was just sold. He was like, I need this chair. This is, of course, though, a thing that happened on the opening night of the devil chair exhibit where he was like, look at this cool chair. Five people bawled uncontrollably and one woman collapsed. So according to TMZ, just a few hours after Bagan opened the exhibit, he shut down the exhibit. But then a couple weeks later, opened it back up, less issues. But that opening night started with a bang. So let's go on to number seven, another thing there, Bella Lugosi's mirror. Now this mirror has many stories attached to it, especially since its namesake comes from its connection to Bella Lugosi. And now if that isn't ringing any bells, he is most well known for playing Dracula in the 1931 film. So quite a ways back. Now guides of the tour at the museum say that Lugosi would use the mirror as a medium for scrying and trying to talk to his dead wife. But the truth is the only confirmed connection is that it was originally said to have once been in Bela Lugosi's house, plus none of his five wives died while he was married to them, and there is no documentation of him participating in the occult, but the mirror has seen some things. It was in the room when Frank Selatry was mysteriously murdered, a crime that still has not been solved. He was found bound up in the master bedroom with a single gunshot in the back of his head. So maybe those who let their minds wander while looking into this mirror fall ill when they project those ideas onto the mirror, or maybe the mirror itself has the capacity to haunt and curse those who look into it. Now, people say they've seen entities reach out to them through the mirror or have the sensation of having their necks bitten while looking into it, but nothing has been confirmed. On to number six, John Morrell's preserved thumb. And now, I don't know exactly what Zach Baggins is saying about this thumb, but it's not John Morrell's. Now, he's probably basing his information off an incredulous book written by Virgil Stewart, and the backstory is, John Morrell in this book is said to be an occult leader and the head of the mystic clan that's purpose was to steal slaves to plan an overthrowing of authority. But this book was written by Virgil Stewart, who wrote it in an attempt to get more clout after capturing John Morrell, who is likely just a horse thief and a slave stealer. Now, Stewart just kind of blew the situation completely out of proportion to try to get more street cred. So while the thumb is real and a real thumb, it's not murals who probably died in prison and was buried with all of his thumbs on him. And now that's not to say what it stands for isn't scary. People in Mississippi read the book and believed in it, believed in what Stewart was saying. In Tennessee, they knew the truth because they knew Stewart and he was just fabricating things. But in Mississippi, Ooh, Nelly, they were suspicious of one another so much. The summer of 1835, people in Mississippi were killing one another and their innocent slaves on the off chance any of them was part of this mystic clan, which is a clan that didn't exist. So now you know the harm in falsifying stories, you can see how this little thumb is a creepy bugger and a symbolism of something bigger than it is. So 
worth it in a way to have at the museum. Now, another scary thing at number five, a cauldron previously owned by Ed Gein. Zach Baggins bought this cauldron at an auction and apparently it was found in a shed on the Old Gein property. And if you need a refresher on who Old Gein was, he was a grave robber and murderer that would experiment on human bodies, making masks of human skin to wear around the house and he used skulls as soup bowls. So no, I'm not kidding. This was his cauldron and okay, what's the big deal, right? It's a cauldron. Well, it turns out, according to the person who auctioned off this item, Ed Gein stored body parts and blood in this cauldron in his shed. Now, obviously, as a collector of the horrendous and haunting, Baggins decided he needed it, and now it's on display. Now, one thing is for sure, that cauldron would make some killer soup. <laughs> now, let's go to number three. Demon House Staircase. So you may think a staircase doesn't have much inherent scary ideas attached to it, and you're not wrong, but this staircase was a part of a whirlwind scary experience. Latoya Amons and her three children allegedly underwent demonic possession in the house the stairs originated from. While living there while renting, Amons and her children experienced possession and terrifying experiences like walking up walls, floating over a bed, and feeling choked. So very haunting experiences. And all this escalated to the point that the Catholic Church backed up a priest who performed three exorcisms on Amons. And then the family relocated for their own safety with the help of Department of Child Services, and Zach Baggins then bought the house. He was interested with the reported demonic possessions and stories and explored the house until he demolished it, thinking, better done with it. He only kept the staircase and a little bit of carpet that's sealed off in a room in his museum that's voluntary for visitors to see, and even voluntary for staff to see because of the entities associated with it. Which is very nice for the staff members. It's like, it's so spooky. It's okay, you don't have to see it. I appreciate that. But now on to number two, a Chris Farley Polaroid. At Zach Bagans Haunted Museum, he has this celebrity deaths room, which first of all, I think it's really weird for people to fixate on the death of someone they don't know, and I think this item I'm gonna talk about is disrespectful. In the celebrity death room, there is a Polaroid of Chris Farley after his overdose that killed him. It was acquired from a police officer that was at the scene. Since I cannot and will not show that photo, just know that it was a photo of his dead body after a drug overdose that visitors have described as sickening, disgusting, shocking, and horrifying. Now, using the image of a dead person, a real person as a gimmick is in poor taste and shows a lack of empathy on Baggins' behalf and that scares me. So that's included on this list. On to number one, Peggy the doll in Peggy's room. Now this one has a past. Let's talk about this doll before it got to the museum. Peggy was sent to a British paranormal investigator named Jane Harris after Peggy's previous owner was having some nightmares where the doll would haunt her dreams. That owner would wake up hot and shaken with fevers and hallucinations and even her local priest couldn't help her out. She eventually figured it was because of Peggy the doll and sent her off to Harris. Once Jane Harris and her team had the doll, they tried to figure out what was up, and they say that Peggy is possessed by the spirit of a woman from London, born in 1946 and died of some sort of chest condition, which is very specific. Wow. Yes, that's the history, but how does Peggy haunt? Well, apparently through dreams, pushing people away from entering her room in the haunted museum, or even light bulbs going out when people mention Peggy's name. Now, people are warned not to look her in the eye because they could feel chest pains, nausea to the point of vomiting, or really bad headaches. And now, this could be the spirit within the doll circumventing some of her own pain, or many coincidences lined up together. But either way, many say the scariest thing they saw on their trip to Zach Bagans Haunted Museum was Peggy. <laughs> 